Okay, final news topic of the week before we move on to some interesting topics with John. But um, Oliver, this one's quite interesting, right? Basically, Apple has announced a new Mac Studio. You have the original Mac I Studio, do. I believe. Yeah. And um, let's just say that the spec options on offer are, are kind of <laughs> odd, right? It is very unusual. It is very unusual. So I'll explain my interest in this first of all, which is that I've had an M1 Ultra Mac Studio for the last three years or so. And that's been like one of my favorite computers I've ever had. It's so fast, it's so sleek, it's so slim, it's so quiet. It's a wonderful computer to use. Tons of memory for all kinds of uses. That's really a fantastic computer. But Apple's been moving really quickly with their M series of chips. And I've been looking maybe to upgrade. The M2 Ultra came out about two years ago, and that was like a pretty minor upgrade over M1 Ultra, like 20%, 30% CPU, GPU improvements. And the Ultra chips, by the way, they're two max chips connected over a silicon interposer with 2.5 terabytes per second of bandwidth uh, between them. So that's basically like a, a situation where the max chips are Apple's biggest chips, and they basically connect two of them to, to form a one chip that is monolithic in software, uh, is perceived as one chip by the operating system, but is is much more powerful. But when the M3 generation came out a year and a half ago, the weird thing is the M3 Max chip didn't appear to have a silicon interposer. So it seemed like, okay, this okay. is gonna skip this generation of product. Um, but it turns out that actually wasn't quite correct because like Rich mentioned, Apple has announced a new series of Mac Studios in addition to the MacBook Air on the same day, but the Mac Studios are what's of interest here. And they include an M4 Max, okay, that's normal. And the step-up chip is not an M4 Ultra, but actually an M3 Ultra chip, which is totally bizarre. Uh, so it seems yeah. like that M3 Max die shot that was going around, did it actually have an interposer connection on it? Either that or they're producing a new version of the M3 Max chip, um, possibly on a different process. I heard some reporting that was on N3E instead of N3B possibly. But in either case, there probably is some funny business going on here because this computer seems like it should have shipped a while ago with maybe an M3 Max and an M3 Ultra chip, but that wasn't the case. They have this M4 Max chip and now this M3 Ultra chip in the same lineup of computers with the M3 Ultra costing considerably more. But I think actually, you know, in performance <laughs> terms, it's 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 kind of a huge step up <laughs> in a lot of respects. Apple's been moving really quickly. So relative to my M1 Ultra, um, it's got about an 80% faster CPU, about a 160% faster GPU, according to Apple. Ultimately, the thing that pushes me off this is just like the M4 series is obviously more recent and you actually have substantially higher single core CPU performance in the M4 series, which is a significant bottleneck for some of the work that I do, some of the exports that I do here. That kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth. So uh, right. personally, I'm kind of thinking maybe I wait for the M5 Ultra and I have this computer for like five years or something. I just wait for that ultimate um, upgrade there. But the other thing that's weird about this computer and, and potentially quite compelling about this computer is they're offering it because they have this unified memory configuration, right? These computers have massive pulse of memory. So my Mac Studio yeah. has 120 gigabytes of RAM, which three years ago was like, you know, a pretty massive amount of RAM, unified memory. So that, that can be used by graphics. That's obviously very key for, can be key for games, can be very important for games, very, very important for AI workflows in particular. Um, that's obviously another big focus area. This new computer can support 512 gigabytes of unified memory. <laughs> and if right. you, it's okay. if ridiculous. You, yeah, if you kick, yeah. if you kick that in, uh, that is an insane amount of money. I'm not going to say how much money it is, but if you were to pursue that, that would be an intense amount of money. Personally, I'd probably go with 256 if I was going to configure that. So yeah, ultimately, I think this is kind of interesting that Apple is shipping this product in a kind of staggered fashion, and they're not shipping presumably an M4 Ultra chip here in this generation of products. But for a lot of users, I could totally see this being a really compelling computer, especially for local AI use. Like you can fit the full four bit DeepSeek R1 model in one computer with 512 gigabytes of RAM. That is pretty insane before then, you know, you'd have to have various server configurations <laughs> and these kinds of crazy uh, Frankenstein computers to try to get that running on a single client machine. In this case, Apple's just going to sell it to you now for a ridiculous price, but still, they'll just sell you a, a computer that can run that um, flat out, probably at a pretty reasonable amount of tokens per second. It has hardware RT support as well. It's the first Mac Studio with hardware RT support in both the M4 Max and M3 Ultra configurations. That should be great for titles like the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows, <laughs> which is shipping day and date on Macs, uh, which should be really, really good there. And yeah, in general, like, I mean, it'd probably be a good deal faster for me. They're quoting a 40% advantage of the Final Cut performance and things like that. 
but uh yeah i think i think i'll, I'll think i'll wait i think i can hold off on this generation <laughs> thankfully uh better cooler calmer heads have prevailed <laughs> you know so i think i think I'll hold i love on. the concept of uh you know 512 gigs of memory being able to contain this this hugely advanced ai model mm -hmm. but then you open chrome run some tabs <laughs> And it just becomes instantly stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, fact, in, fact, in fact, Alex, going back to, you know, Star Trek, the original series, you know, Captain Kirk destroying supercomputers by <laughs> uh, by using logic. Making he them could have just by opened, zero. He could have just opened Chrome <laughs> with a few, a few tabs. <laughs> it's the simple way. Yeah. Uh, let, let's, let's sort of uh, get to the bottom line. An M3 Ultra versus an M4 Max. Uh, I guess the M3 Ultra is the, in theory, the better option. Weirdly, yes, yes, right. it should. Well, it should be better. I mean, it's funny you bring up the example of opening Chrome because opening up individual Chrome tabs should be ever so slightly faster on the M4 uh, chip, I would presume. <laughs> in most, in, unless you had like a crazy website uh, that could take advantage of like the 32 CPU cores <laughs> that are on the. M3 Ultra, which is a pretty massive amount, but it should be better. I mean, in most circumstances, the M4 series of chips, the primary advantage there, as far as I see it, is you go from four gigahertz as a maximum clock rate on the performance scores to 4.4 gigahertz. You also have an improvement in performance per clock. Those are things that I was expecting to see in an M3, rather in a Mac Studio update with the M4 Ultra chip, but it looks like they're skipping that. Um, so. It is going to be better. I mean, they're quoting some crazy figures here, like 22 streams of 8K ProRes footage at once in Final Cut, things like this that are, wow. frankly, beyond uh, any conceivable need that most people could have. You know? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> if you're editing a 22-way 8K at multicam in Final Cut, yeah, it should be able to yeah. keep up. Sounds great. Yeah. 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 United wow. Nations here. Yeah. Good. But I think, I think part of this also just, like, in, in my own view, and I think probably in your view as well, uh, Rich, with with you having um, an M1 based, an M1 Pro based MacBook, I believe as well, these M yep. series chips have just aged like wine. They run so well. Um, my computer is still in yeah. fantastic shape. It, it runs. I mean, anything I can, I can put on it in terms of a professional workload. It, it just screams through. So I, I feel like a lot of people who are in my position who might have an older M1 Max or M1 Ultra based chip. Um, one of these computers from like over three years ago, in some cases, they're probably looking at these computers and saying, yeah, that would be a lot faster, but also there's not really a workload that currently is pushing my computer hard <laughs> the such that I would have a qualitatively different experience if I had a faster computer. So right. I think a lot of people are in that position right now. Apple has just outdone themselves <laughs> in some respects, and it's making it a little bit harder to incentivize and upgrade in some cases. Whereas with the Intel computers, I always felt like okay, this thing is pokey, it's throttling, It's there are all these problems. I never felt like that with the M1 series of chips. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John's just bought a 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro with the M1. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure which one. I think it might be the Pro. Um, and, uh, you know, he's just blown away by it. You know, it's, it's, it, it's still really good. I, I've got no need to upgrade for my M1 Pro, I don't think, which is possibly an issue for, for Apple. <laughs> but it is what it is, right?